A new study reveals species of organisms living off the largest accumulation of plastic garbage in the ocean, and it happens to be off the coast of California. Hi, I'm Chris with CPTV News. In our season three finale of Quick Cut, we're gonna tell you about that. Plus, the girls tennis team continues their recent dominance under a new, yet returning head coach. In a new study published in the Nature Ecology and Evolution Journal last week, a team of researchers revealed that dozens of species of coastal invertebrate organisms have been able to survive and reproduce on a patch of plastic garbage that's been floating in the ocean for years. This heap of plastic, known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, is a 620,000 square mile swirl of trash in the ocean between California and Hawaii. Scientists have warned that there has been a, quote, rapid and unprecedented, end quote, increase in ocean plastic pollution since 2005, and say these findings suggest plastic pollution might be enabling the creation of new floating ecosystems of species not normally able to survive in the open ocean. The United Nations predicts that India will surpass China in population by the middle of this year, making it the world's most populated country. India's population is expected to grow by approximately 3 million people, putting the total population at 1.428 billion, compared to China's 1.425 billion. China has been the most populated country dating back to 1950. Part of this is due to China's birth rate for 2022 falling to 6.77 births per 1,000 people, the lowest rate on record, which most believe is directly related to the country's strict one-child policy, which was implemented from 1980 until 2015. Over the past year, Spain has endured a drought caused by heat waves which have led to forest fires. However, not all of its effects have been negative, as the drought has caused water levels in the Penta de Sao Lake to drastically decrease, revealing a church and remains of an ancient village. Previously, only the top of the former church of Sant Roma could be seen. As water levels receded, more of the church could be seen. Today, the church is fully unveiled, and visitors are allowed to explore the remains. CPHS hosted their annual prom this past Saturday, with the Grand March taking place in the CPHS gym just before the dinner and dance. The march saw students dressed to impress as they walked across the gym, which was decorated as a promenade. Trenton Mayday and Jenna Schroeder were announced as prom king and queen, respectively, at the end of the march. Nearly 1,000 students attended the dance that followed at the Halls of St. George in Cherville. Hi, I'm Madeline with CPTV News. CPHS's annual senior send-off Friday Night Lights is just a few weeks away. The night is an opportunity for the senior class to gather one more time and celebrate together prior to graduation. Open to CPHS seniors only, the event will take place on May 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. on the football field and will feature music, inflatables, food trucks, gift giveaways, and more. You will need to RSVP by going to the school's website and clicking the link under the News and Announcements heading. The CPHS Dance Marathon to benefit Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago will take place on Friday, May 19th from 4 to 9 p.m. in the Fieldhouse. This event is sponsored by the CPHS Student Council, who has been raising money all year for Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. We're trying to raise $10,000 this year for Lurie Children's Hospital, and at the event we will have water balloon fights, we'll have dodgeball, we'll have a lot of other games that are super fun for the event. To sign up, visit events.dancemarathon.com. All AP exams will take place at CPHS between May 1st and 12th. Follow this QR code for a link to the full schedule of exam times and dates on the CPHS website. Some reminders. Morning tests will all start at 8 a.m., afternoon tests will occur at 12 p.m., and the Physics C test will begin at 2 p.m. on the 9th. You should bring a number two pencil, black or blue pen, and a calculator if you need it. If you are unable to make it to your test date, you should contact your AP coordinator about taking an exam on a later date. The girls' tennis team defeated Valparaiso High School last Thursday at home, 5-0. First singles, Anna Barron won 6-3, 6-4, and first doubles, Katie Muma and Avery Van Sennis had a tight match but came out with the 7-6, 7-5 win. Social studies teacher Don Barron returned to CPHS this school year as head coach of the Bulldogs. The boys' volleyball team lost to Lake Central last Thursday in straight sets. Elsie came out hot in the first set, winning 25-16. CP came out with more energy in the second set and eventually had a 7-point lead over LC, but the dogs couldn't finish, losing a tight game 26-24. Crown Point was electric again in the third, but had trouble closing, ultimately losing a close game 25-21. The loss drops the team to 7-6 on the season. Their next game is home tonight against Valpo at 5 o'clock. Before we go, a quick look at our CPNWI weather forecast. 
On Friday, we'll see partly sunny skies with a high near 63 degrees and a 30% chance of showers in the morning and an overnight low of 43. Partly cloudy with showers likely in the afternoon on Saturday with a high of 60 and a low around 40. On Sunday, mostly cloudy, showers likely again, but with a below average high of 53. Our season is ending a little earlier than usual as we pack up our lights, set, and camera and move out of our old studio while our new space is being constructed. But remember, for the latest in CP and NWI news, check in regularly with CPTV News or thedogradio.com at the bottom of every hour. Follow us on Snapchat at CPTV underscore QuickCut to catch a replay of this episode or any episodes you may have missed. For all of us at CPTV News, we'll see you next time.